Hi guys and welcome back to today's middle game video and today we're going to go over a new topic which is stopping enemy counterplay. Well, you know that if you have an advantage you first of all want to make sure that your opponent doesn't get any counterplay because it really makes your game harder and your opponent's game easier. So one way of um, stopping your opponent's counterplay is to keep him helpless and this is what we're going to talk about today so let's just start with our first game in this position as you can see white has almost a perfect game perfect position as you can see he's controlling this defile with his two rooks and also a queen he's the king of this file you can see that the black pieces are all passive um, here this rook on a8 is doing nothing, also this knight, this rook is also not that great, right? And this knight, I mean, what is he doing? He's attacking nothing, and he's on the edge of the board, of course. This bishop is also not that great. If you look at white's pieces, this knight is just a beast here, on this d6 square, it's attacking a lot of stuff and it's really being a really annoying knight and we don't really need to talk about these three pieces they are just perfect on this open defile so actually white in this position is just winning and black here played rook to e6 and the idea is basically to take this knight off the board on the next move if white does for example something he wants to take this knight off the board and the point is that when you recapture he wants to take again and exchange as many pieces here so white's advantage is going to be as small as possible and the black wants white to get as many of his um, defenders or attackers of this defile as possible so white doesn't want to allow this and he also doesn't want to allow um, black to take this knight with a bishop because this knight is really better than a bishop so that's why he has to prevent black from doing this and how to do this? Pause the video and think about how to prevent Black's plan and just keep him helpless. The correct move here is Queen to c4. And the point is that now he can't take the knight, of course, because of Rook takes d6. And this will lead to really big material losses. Because as you can see, he can't take the Rook because it's pinned because of the Queen. And we're also taking the Queen, he has to move it somewhere. And then we're going to take the rook and I mean this is just going to be over so black can't do this I mean what is he going to do he's he's absolutely helpless here okay he played knight to g7 just defending this um, rook on e6 uh, just in case if this rook moves you know uh, then this queen would be attacking the rook and now knight to b5 now, why did white move his knight out of this beautiful square? The reason is simple. You have these two rooks on this open defile, and it's a good thing that they control this open defile, but when the knight was on d6, they weren't really doing anything, so that's why he moved this knight to b5 to open the roads for his rooks. So now, black played knight to a6, with the dream of playing knight to c7 and exchanging the knight here, as you can see. But white of course didn't allow this, he penetrated to this d7 square with his rook, because as we know, rooks are the best on the 7th rank. And now this is just over basically, um, black can't do anything, he moved to this h8 square, uh, just getting out of this uh, pin here. But now, what is the winning move? Pause the video and think about it. Okay, so the winning move here is knight to a7, and it's a pretty simple tactic, attacking the queen, and the queen has nowhere to go, as you can see all the squares are protected, so black has to take this knight here, and we take it back, and we're an exchange up, we're controlling this defile, we are going to penetrate on the next move, uh, probably with our rook to this d7 square, and I mean... What else do you want? You have a very good position as white, just winning. So white went on to win the game. Now here, as we saw in this game, um, black tried to just get at least some counterplay with rook to e6 and to take this really good knight with his bishop, 
but White saw this and just kept him helpless by playing Queen to c4 and Black has nothing to do. As we saw, he quickly lost the game. So okay, let's go to our next example. And this example here is a really good one because as you can see, White has castled on the king side and Black has castled on the queen side. And this means that White is probably going to attack um, the Black's king here with these pawns on the queen side and Black is going to try to attack the White's king here on the king side. This is a really tactical and dynamical position but I don't want you here to find a tactical combination or anything because it doesn't really exist but as black here I want you to stop white's counterplay and how do you do this? Take a moment, pause the video and let's see. Okay, so if you want to hurry with an attack for example with a rook to g8 then this is not really good. You want to think about your opponent's threats too, because they're also going to be dangerous for your king. First of all, you have to take care of your king, and then you have to uh, think about other stuff. So the best move here is c4. And what is the point here? Black just wants to close up the queen side, so white can't come to black's king to attack him. He, he can't break through to just destroy black's king. Now, of course, um, we're attacking white's bishop, so it has to move, and white moved it to this e2 square. And now, what is the point of black's play here? He played a6, and this is really beautiful. He's like saying to white, you're not going to attack my king, I'm going to attack yours, and I'm just going to absolutely destroy you. Because now, if, for example, um, white wants to attack the black's king by pushing the pawns and just breaking through, creating uh, open files for his pieces to just uh, attack black but now he can't do anything if he plays a5 we can just block the whole thing with b5 and he has no way to you know get into this king this king is here completely safe and if he plays b5 we play a5 this is really beautiful here um, white just can't attack the black's king and meanwhile Black is just going to prepare his forces to just crush white. So let's see here what happened. White has no play. He played king to h1. We can see rook to g8. Just getting his rooks here into attack. Um, this is pretty logical, right? White played rook to g1, trying to defend. We can see rook to g4, trying to double up here on the g file. Um, just creating more pressure and also threatening things like um, h3 so it's really not comfortable for white and I would never like to play this position with white but rather with black so white played queen to d2 I mean what what else can he do he, he, he can't do anything and we can see rook to g8 doubling on the file and now he finally plays a5 but like we said b5 just ends up white's dreams to attack black's king. And now after rook to d1 we can see that white can barely move his pieces and black is just going to remaneuver his pieces to attack the white's king and eventually he won the game. Now the continuation of this um, game is not really important for our topic but let's just see how black won. He played bishop to f8 trying to get his bishop into the game. We can see knight to h2 attacking the rook and now knight takes e5. Sacrificing the rook, the exchange, uh, I mean rook for a knight, it's just brilliant because black can do this just because white has no counterplay and black has all the play here uh, and he's really just going to crush the white's king with his pawns. As we're going to see here, white took the rook, black recaptured and these two pawns are really dangerous with this rook behind them. And also this knight can, you know, jump somewhere. And it's really going to be very dangerous here for the white's king. Also this bishop is looking there, the queen. It's really not nice for white. So here white played e4. And after bishop to d6, we can see queen to e3. This is not really important. Knight to d7. They exchange bishops. Rook to d4. This pin here on the queen means absolutely nothing. After e5, 
uh, white had to move the rook and now f5 these pawns are just going to crush the white's king he took the pawn on d5 and we can see f4 <laughs> this is this is really brilliant here you can really see the power of the pawns queen to e4 knight to f6 attacking the queen queen to f5 check king just moves black's king is completely safe and now f3 bishop to c8 attacking the queen again queen to b1 finally moving back and g3 now the point is that black is going to play h3 on the next move just breaking through uh, white's defense and now after bishop to f1 rook to h8 he took the pawn he recaptured okay this is not that important and now e4 sacrificing another pawn but the point is that these two pawns are going to rush in and are just going to be unstoppable after queen to d1 we can see brilliant knight g4 sacrificing a knight just in order to have three passed pawns this is just this is just unstoppable and after f3 white had nothing else to do to just sacrifice the rook back because otherwise black is just going to destroy him as you can see this move here is just uh, checkmate so he played rook to g2 black recaptured and white just resigned the game this is just over so again we can see how we stopped any white chances of counterplay by playing c4 and a6 blocking the whole stuff on the side where we have the king and just then taking action on the side where our opponent has the king so let's take a look at our uh, final example today who do you think is better white or black now I would say that black is really better first of all because white has this really bad bishop on g2 which is like nothing this knight also seems to you know just sit there because it has no squares to jump to and white has this c2 pawn which is pretty weak because our rook is attacking it and it can hardly move because then you know um, it would create some other problems as you can see uh, we could take this pawn so this c pawn is pretty weak on the other hand our d6 pawn is not that weak because it's defended with our king and also with our queen now let's see how fisher uh, as black took advantage of this and just won the game but first a move like rook to c4 would look you know pretty reasonable attacking this pawn also preparing this uh, just attacking this c2 pawn but now after g3 what would get some chances because he would move his knight to this f5 square and it would be quite annoying here so black really doesn't want this so that's why first he stopped white from doing his plans he kept him helpless he played h5 just simply preventing g4 and then focusing on his plans so now white played b3 and what do you think black played black took the knight on e2 now what is the point why did black trade his very good bishop for the opponent's terrible knight the point is that this knight is the only piece which is preventing black from going to this c3 square and doubling up tripling up on this c2 pawn just attacking it so that's why he just took it off and now he of course went to this c3 square and this is quickly going to end up in a win for black as we can see uh, what happened here root d3 rook to c8 he took black recaptured and this is a backwards pawn it can't really move because this pawn is attacking it and we're also putting pressure on this file on this pawn so it's really weak and what is hardly going to hold on to this pawn so what happened here white played uh, king to h2 and queen to c5 and we can see that this is really a brilliant position for black um, he actually won a pawn in a couple of moves let's just take a look at how uh, white played his rook to a2 which looks terrible this rook is just passive only defending this pawn but okay what did black do he played g6 he wasn't in a hurry because he knows that he has the advantage here um, this backwards pawn is going to probably fall and white played bishop to f1 just getting his bishop to a more active square and now we can see queen to d4 centralizing the queen 
also attacking this pawn here and white had to defend it with f3 and now this square becomes pretty weak we can see rook to e3 and queen to g2 now after queen to d1 white moved the bishop to this c4 square the pressure is really big black is just going to win this game and here he won this f3 pawn and from there it's just over you can see this rook is terrible all the black pieces are here perfect this is just over so this was a video about how to keep your opponent helpless and th that you have to try to stop your opponent's counterplay so that it doesn't come to you know any complications so i hope you guys really enjoyed that video if you did please um, send me some feedback and share the video and i will see you in the next one